I think I've discovered why the BMW driver does not indicate. It's because the human brain does not have the capacity to store all of these buttons and they just forget where the indicators are. It's not their fault. Today I'm in a BMW X5M, which is really an S SUV. If you think about the performance of this car, it can actually keep up with some pretty iconic cars. For example, a Ferrari F40, a Lamborghini Murcielago, as well as a Mercedes SLS and the SLR. So it's really a supercar which has the practicality and utility of an SUV. However, is it something of everything or everything of nothing? which is really what I want to find out today. This isn't a thorough review of the car, it's really just my thoughts and my first impressions. Drivability. What is this car like to drive? When I first got in this car, I just didn't understand anything. There's so many buttons and different settings that it makes no sense to me. For example, there's three settings for your suspension, your handling, your efficiency, as well as your transmission. And I don't know why you need that many different combinations. And it's a lot. Don't believe me? Let's pause for math break. Told you. And there's so many things which are just duplicative in this car. For example, you can change gears through the paddles or through the gear lever. Why? Look, I want a car that's simple, easy, and you just get in and drive. I don't want to have to decide between changing between my paddles or changing between the gear stick. Give me one option, that's all what I need. Yes or no, comfort or sport, that's it. You don't need all these different settings. I know I'm going on a rant here, but I hate when people try and overcomplicate things and when this car has so much potential to be incredible. For example, this display unit. There's no touch. Why is there no touch? I have to fiddle around with these twists and knobs and everything's like twisty and knobby. Yes, this car has a lot of performance. In fact, it did scare me when I put my foot down. Whoa. But again, it doesn't deliver it in the right way. Even when this car isn't at its most comfortable setting, it's still jerky and twitchy. And the brakes are very squeaky as well. In theory, it may make sense, but in practicality, it, it's useless. So these are just really my thoughts. It's by no means an exhaustive review of the car. In fact, I've barely spent any time in it. As we speak, I'm rushing over to pick up my McLaren from McLaren. 